Hello everybody and welcome to your next SFML tutorial and this is a really long awaited tutorial. I've been getting a few comments on, on my earlier videos asking uh, when I'm, I'm going to be making the tile map uh, tutorials. Uh, so just like I've done with Allegro HD, I'm going to be splitting this into uh, five different videos, okay? So uh, the, it's going to go from easy to hard, uh, whichever, depending on your skill level, you could stop at any any video or if you want to go on throughout all the videos of loading uh, tile maps and stuff and, and really see uh, different methods of going about it, then feel free to do so. I'm just going to be doing it from like from beginner to intermediate to like advanced. So uh, but without further ado, let's get it right into it. So first of all, what we're gonna want to do is that we're gonna want to uh, include the f stream, and uh, we want to define a, a a size for our blocks or whatever. I set this to forty by default. You guys can change it if you want. You guys can have a block size x and block size y if you really want to, but I'm not trying to make it too complicated. So we have four new ver no five new five new variables. Yes load counter x load counter y map size x map size y and a, a two dimensional array called our map file and it's 100 by 100 now the way we're going to be loading in our map is that uh we're going to be getting the map size x and map size y from the text file and then we're going to be using that to determine uh, uh we're going to load in the files and draw the files according accordingly now the reason why I'm set this to 100 by 100 is because if you draw a map that's larger than 10 by 10 or whatever, it has to be able to contain it. That's why I made it larger than it is. So if you guys forget to change that, then you can always, uh, it, like you won't run into any problems. So there's two new functions that we have. We have a load map function and draw map function. And our load map function, uh, just so you guys know, if you guys don't know the basics of loading files, then you guys are probably not going to understand what's going on so you should learn about the file stream anyways so we're using the if stream to open up the file name that we specify in here so we're going to open up that file we check if the file is open and if the file is open then we use open file to get the map size x and map size y so uh let me uh show you this quickly so right here is our our map okay and first of all it's going to get the map size x and map size y so this is the map size x this is the map size y and the rest of this is our map and if you guys want to know what i'm using right here this is notepad plus plus if you want to download it you can search for it on google so we get the map size x and map size y so we know how wide and how long our, our map is so if you if you go back to notepad it's eight it's eight spaces wide and eight i mean ten spaces wide and ten spaces uh down of vertically vertical so we we got the map size x and map size y so now we want to say that while not uh while not open file that eof so while we're not at the end of file then we want to keep, uh, keep looping so first we're going to get do open file and we're going to store the data file into our map file and store that load counter x and load counter y and each time we do that we increment load counter x plus one and then if load counter x is greater than or equal to map size x we reset load counter x is zero and then we increment load counter y by one so what is this doing okay so for, by default load counter x and load counter y are zero well i never set it to zero but they, they, sh they should be set to zero so we don't run into any errors uh, some compilers might give you errors for that uh, but so our load counter y and our load counter x equal to zero okay so first of all it's going to store this first value into map file zero zero then we increment a load counter x plus one okay so it, we in the next time when it gets the next value it stores the value into map file one zero and then map file two zero map file three zero all the way to map file nine zero and then when it reaches once it's greater than or equal to map size then we reset load counter x to zero and then we set load counter we increment load counter y so therefore we go back to it again and then we load in 
um, map file zero one, map file one one, map file two one, map file three one, etc. etc. until we have all the files loaded in. Okay? That's simple enough. So uh but but note right right now uh that it, like uh if you have any like probably blank spaces or something right there it it could probably give you errors not exactly sure but uh I never tested it but it might it might give you errors uh so so try not to do that uh but yeah so that's basically how we load in the contents now it comes down to drawing the contents now the drawing is not going to really change much within the next five videos it is going to change but not drastically uh but in the draw map what we have is that before we do the for loop we declare our shape uh and we name it rect and we do the default properties for the rectangle so we set to zero zero the block size the the width and the height of it and we set the default color to white with an alpha value of 255 okay and then we have another color right here because depending on uh so if the number is zero then we're going to display a bluish color and if the number is one then we're going to display uh orange type of color okay so we have we go through all the elements within our 2d array and we do this by going to by four uh i is less than map size x and if j is less than map size y okay so we say that if map file i j is equal to zero then we reset the color uh, uh to a bluish color and if the map file uh, i j is equal to one then we set the color to uh, orange color or any other color you like so the reason why I've done it this way is that uh, that I specified a, sh a shape beforehand is that it, it could get a little lag it, your program could be could be very laggy if you keep on creating brand new shapes every single time you're going to draw something new to the screen right uh, SFML doesn't really handle that well uh, uh, something like uh, Allegro whenever you're drawing different shapes you can draw different wrecks or whatever or rectangles uh, to the screen uh, with with nice efficiency with SFML it's not really like that uh, so if what we do is that we only create one rect uh, shape and then we set the position for that set the color and then we draw it to the screen so it's already drawn to the screen and then we loop through it again and then we use the same rectangle we set it to a different position set it to a, a different or same color and then we draw another we draw the rectangle to the screen on a different position but we haven't done window dot clear or anything so even though we're using the same rectangle and we're drawing it on different positions it, it will still look like it's um a bunch of different rectangles drawn because we haven't cleared the window yet okay so uh that is one thing to take note of so once we do that uh what we're gonna do is create our window we're gonna load our map i named it map 2 i have a map 1 uh, that's for later tutorials because this um, the way the layout of the maps is different so we have uh our map 2 and we load the map and then we go through our regular game loop and then we clear the window draw the map and display the um the map to the screen so if we if we run this program we'll see what we'll get So just like how we define in our in our text file, uh, all the zeros represent uh, the blue and all the ones represent orange. So if I take that window up again, so uh, each each block represents each block represents uh, uh, forty is is forty by forty spaces long. So when we do set position and we say we set the position to i times block size and j times block size, it's gonna draw to that position and then it's gonna uh, add forty to that. So, uh, so yeah, so then it draws the it draws the box to the right corresponding position and how wide it actually has to be at. So that is it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and bye.